Welcome back. Nearly $57 billion has flowed into muni bonds in the first six months of the year. That's the most for any first half in nearly 30 years, according to Refinitiv Lipper. But a congressional failure to extend the debt ceiling limit this fall could have a big impact on that money. My next guest says if the ceiling isn't raised, it'll cause a ripple effect that could roll through the world financial system and make the financial crisis of 2008 look like a three-minute G-rated movie trailer. And it could be disastrous for the muni market if U.S. creditworthiness is questioned. So <laughs> with that trailer, Tom Kozlik is here joining me to discuss. He's head of municipal research and analytics at Hilltop Securities. I, I mean, Tom, I think the point you're trying to make is, look, if we defaulted on our debt, all of that would come to pass. But every time we go through this exercise, we never really get to that point. Is this time different? Uh, let's hope it's not. Let's hope that uh, the base case, if anything, is something that is a 11th hour agreement. Uh, but even in 11th hour agreement, we saw some pretty significant uh, market wide and municipal market implications uh, back in the summer of 2011. Such as? So one of the things from the municipal market we saw is after the uh, ratings downgrade from S&P, there was a ripple effect uh, where credit was concerned. Uh, and so that's one of the things that I, I could see happening if there is some kind of recognition by rating agencies or a rating agency, number one, number two. One of the other things that I'm uh, concerned about from a municipal market perspective is the just the level of uncertainty where something like this is concerned. You were just talking about the uh, the demand uh, that we've seen for municipals over the last couple of months. I would be very concerned if there would be a that there could be a supply and demand imbalance, something similar to what we saw last year when issuers really accelerated the uh, the sales of their issues before the election. So draw the line for me between the Treasury sort of not paying the debt or, or something and it affecting the muni bond market. So explain the relationship there. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the first things and one of the reasons, one of the key reasons that I started paying as close attention to this over the last couple of weeks is just because, first of all, I think that because of how much uh, kind of political theater there's been going on in Washington, one of the things that I wanted to communicate to investors is that this is not just political theater. And you know, just to specifically answer your question, the, uh, with all of the things that are happening with regard to the, uh, you know, now it's not just a potential fourth wave, this is a fourth wave. I'm concerned that the, uh, the political in and out and or the, and or the political and market uh, volatility that could result from this and the uncertainty coupled with what, we're, what we could be seeing with revenue bonds and stress in revenue bonds over the next couple of months uh, could really pose a problem for uh, municipal investors. All right, so I'm also thinking about the timeline on this. I think it was Lou Wrightson, who, um, whoever the analyst is who follows this, the cash flows very closely, has moved up his timeline from debt ceiling to late October to early October. So we're talking maybe about six weeks' time to figure this out? Right, so the CBO, so the CBO studies uh, identified that it could be as early as October 1st, maybe going to November. On the other hand, there could be some uncertainty there. There, you know, It could end up being even sooner than October. And so you know, the fact that we just don't have a, a specific drop dead date yet is uh, a, a, um, an issue of concern. Uh, but then again, you know, whatever ends up happening uh, combined with the other political issues that are going on in Washington right now we're, is something that I'm concerned about. Do you think people should buy any backup in muni yields that's created as a result of, of this? So whether that's whether or not it's related to the debt ceiling or even the situation where uh, we see, you know, I'm already reading news about some schools closing in Texas and Georgia, for example. Uh, this fourth wave it could end up being a, a, a credit issue going into the, uh, the fall. Uh, where geos are concerned, I'm not as troubled. It's really in the revenue sectors that I think, whether it be healthcare or higher ed uh, or mass transit or other transportation bonds, I think that is where uh, I think there could be some credit stress. That being said, I think one of the things that investors learned over the last couple of months, if not going back to last year, is that municipal bond credit is pretty resilient. Well, because it might ultimately be backed up by the federal government? I wouldn't necessarily say that. I'd say just because uh, they, a combination of the cap, I think, well, first of all, the backs, the relief from the federal government, especially the $650 billion of relief we saw in the Rescue Plan Act, definitely, definitely helped support munis for sure. But I think that also, especially where GEO is concerned, uh, the security pledges have, have uh, shown that they're pretty strong and pretty resilient. All right, Tom, thank you very, very much for kind of examining a lot of the different sides of this issue. We appreciate it.
Tom Koslick with Hilltop Securities. Still ahead, home builder sentiment falling to its lowest level in a year, despite the drop in lumber prices. What's behind it next? And as we head to break, let's check back on the markets. The Dow was down 501 at the top of the hour. We're nearing those declines again, about six points away from that level. Nasdaq's down one and a half percent. We're back in a moment. Digging into discretionary Under Armour, DPH, she said, PPH. <laughs> Gap and Tesla are the biggest laggers. Look at Tesla down another 5%. We're back in a moment. Muni Money is sponsored by BAM. Ask your investment advisor about BAM insured Muni bonds. Investing in America's infrastructure drives our country forward. Municipal bonds help strengthen America's backbone and connect us all through essential investment in local opportunities. At Build America Mutual, we maximize the safety and stability of municipal bond investments. That means a bright future for our communities and investors' portfolios. Learn more about the exceptional security of BAM-insured bonds. 